and welcome back. Today we have another critique video. For those guys who are new here, you can use the hashtag ABCrit over on Instagram in order to get your work critiqued. And you can also submit your work over on Facebook. If you're interested, I have a link to my social media in the description down below. Feel free to go ahead and check that out. So today, let's see what we got. Look, look at this. Oh my gosh. So, so tap. Of course it's you. Of course it's you. Double click on that. Now obviously this is amazing work, but in my opinion, I would have moved the skull a little bit to the left over on this side slightly. And the reason being is you have the center of the skull coming down, right? Everything is fine up until this point right here, where suddenly you have this very symmetrical form down here that is not really symmetrical with the face. And the reason I feel that is, is because you don't have enough room here on the right side in order to move this bottom piece over to the right. Otherwise it'd be cropped off the canvas. So had the whole entire head been moved slightly, to the left, you would have had a little bit more room to play with on the right, so like that everything would have been symmetrical. That's just my own personal opinion, though. This this is a phenomenal oil painting. I really like this, man. So it's that this is this is great. I do follow you, right? Yes, I, I do. I was about to say I, th I thought I did. I was pretty sure I did. But you know what really interests me is this piece right here. Because you are onto something. Number one, nice hand style. You could clean it up a little bit with a little bit of negative space management and letter and name weight. The letter and name weight isn't as big of a deal because it's actually okay, but negative space management right here right between the EM that could be better space them out slightly because the rest of your letters tell us that this is an abnormally tight negative space management compared to the other letters you have. Okay, so when we take a look at the piece, you have some things here that are dope, and then you have some things here that are worrisome, right? You have compressed extensions, pretty much one on each letter. Now, something weird happens with these extensions, and that is, is that they look tacky. And this is very common with arrow extensions. Arrow extensions are so, so common, and so cliche in graffiti, to where they almost need a purpose in order to be there, which you're travel distance doesn't really have any purpose. If they don't have a purpose, then arrow extensions typically need to flow at the destination, which also does not happen here. Another great way to use arrows in graffiti is to kind of flow them with the momentum of the piece, which once again does not happen in this piece specifically. Now granted, there are ways to use arrows that don't flow with momentum, but that's that's a lot harder to do, and that's a lot of the reason why arrows typically look tacky, is because they didn't flow with momentum, and they didn't succeed in the more advanced way of flowing. But we're not gonna get into that because that's a little more advanced. Here's a good example, you're gonna have to excuse because this is a video, and whenever I hover my mouse, there's a big play button. The S typically starts flow here, right? It comes around this way. You do have the arrow which goes against the original grain of the flow, but it comes down this way and notice how the S shoots down and then back up. That back up direction goes ahead and flows directly with this. Now the structures may not line up but the momentum flows out of the piece. That right there is how arrows typically work in graffiti. And that's th that's just the most basic way to flow. Who is that to me? But there certainly are a lot more technical advanced ways to flow arrows but it's a critique. We're keeping it simple. As a result, try to flow the momentum of the piece. Another big issue with this piece is the actual flow between the letters themselves. Each letter looks disjointed, and this is simply just because of line uniformity and similarity, which is kind of the key to making a cohesive name. This E honestly is a lot better than this E, but the two E's don't flow at all with one another because they're using completely different structures when it comes to the top portion of their E. This is a three box top and this is a one box top. This is a one box bottom, this is a three box bottom. So the E's don't flow with one another. Not to mention E and B are very similar letters. Cause think of it, all you gotta do is get rid of this spine right here and you'd be left with a backwards E. Now I'm not saying use a backwards E and then throw a, a vertical line <laughs> in between it in order to make it into a letter E, that's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is they have similar features that you can use in order to make the two letters flow together, which is a missed opportunity. The B and the E's don't flow, the B and the N doesn't flow, the E and the N doesn't flow, and the N and the last E don't flow. As a result, your name looks disjointed. Also, if we can for a second talk about interior details. This is something that, that I find to be a great topic, and I might actually do a, a solo video on this if you guys want it. But interior details on the basic level, not necessarily the advanced level, and mind you, this could get super advanced if you want it to, but we're gonna keep it basic. But interior details on a basic level can very easily enhance a piece by flowing with the contours near them. All right, what does that mean? You kind of did it, right? With these three lines right up here, they flow with this right here. So these three lines work beautifully. This highlight works beautifully, why? Because it follows the contour of this. These lines right here, they flow with this over here. 
works perfectly. Obviously, you don't always have to do this. You can have things like this right here that also works. And that's also why this interior detail right here, it's why it works because it flows with this, it flows with that. Perfect, great job. So think about that. Try to make your interior details flow with the contour from the letter. And that'll help you out a bunch. Look at this star watch. Oh my God, I really like this. Are you gonna apply a uh, varnish to this? That would really, that would really, really top this off. My suggestion for this piece would have been to go into a little more detail into this rock. Also, when you're doing a still life, plan things out to make interesting shadow shapes, right? That's kind of like the allure behind a still life is texture, shadow, and really just the composition of the actual subject matters themselves. You could have created some very interesting shadow shapes in other areas, say moving this plant more so over here in order to cast a shadow across this part of the owl. That would have made for more interesting shadow shapes, especially if you can get kind of like a light beaming between the plant and the owl, so that you would have had a highlight in between that shadow. Just, just things like this. Play around with the shadows in a still life. Don't necessarily just think about the objects you're moving around. Really think about the lighting and the shadow. A still life really comes together when you work with all of those elements. The subject matter themselves, placing them where they need to be placed it within the frame of the photo. The color of the subject matters, because just for example, if I have an orange and some blueberries, maybe I can position the blueberries in such a way where they cast a reflective light on the orange. As a result, that blue on the orange color will then affect that area and create for some interesting effects, as well as some good color composition. So once again, think about where you're placing your subject matter, the color of the subject matter, and how they can influence one another, the shadows, as well as the light. Like the actual the actual lamp that you're using think about all of these things and play around with all of them that's really how you bring us to life to life with that said great job on the actual painting this is more so a critique on how to set up a still life but this this is good stuff as far as a critique on the actual painting i certainly without a doubt would have blurred this out this back piece because this is the focal point now you have a range of focus right this is essentially your foreground your middle ground your background as you guys can notice i'm in the foreground i am most in focus this is in the middle ground, it's kind of in focus. This is in the background, it's not in focus. Think of your paintings like that. Now in this instance, because this is a very flexible focal range, I would have had all the subject matter in, within focus. And then I would have had the front of the table kind of in focus, getting more in focus the closer we got to this area right here, and then this back piece not in focus at all. That would have been blurred out. And I may have even positioned the light in such a way in order to cast a shadow more right here, creating a light triangle here. Just so we know that that is the edge of the table, and then that can kind of become a lost edge. So that's my critique about your art as well, is, is think about edges. Think about the firmness and the, the softness of an edge. Really helps out with art a ton. Now I've seen a lot of the critique videos, people are like, oh, you skipped my, my piece, you skipped this, you skipped that, why don't you critique this? And the reason being is because for work such as this, for work such as this right here, which they actually look like they're from the same person, and work from various other people, all of the things that I say apply to you guys. All, all the things in the previous critiques are things that would be said about your work, which is keep it simple, learn the fundamentals, stop trying to add style, work on basic letter structure and other fundamentals such as negative space management, letter and name weight, letter and name positioning, flow, so on and so forth. All of those things are important in order to be able to do the wild styles. You guys are the ones who submit your work to me looking for advice and that's all I'm here to do. So don't take it as me bashing your work. I'm here simply just to, you know, kind of show you where you went wrong and things you could have done better. But take a look at this piece which attempts to be a wild style. The letters structures are completely distorted for the sake of style. The letter and name weight is completely distorted once again for the sake of style. Letter positioning once again distorted for the same reasons. So all of the fundamentals are sacrificed all for the sake of style when style should just simply enhance the fundamentals, not the other way around. It doesn't matter how wild you get, even if you look at somebody like Softless, which is a good example because I know his work is pretty stylized and a lot of people like his work nowadays, you can still see his S in here. No matter how stylized he gets, the letter is still there. You can still make out the O right here. You can still make out the F. So the letter still remains no matter how much style is added. And the same cannot be said about your piece here or this piece. And that right there is pure evidence of somebody who understands and has practiced the fundamentals versus somebody who has not. So that, that's typically why I don't critique every single piece I see, just because a lot of the same lessons apply to a lot of the people submitting. So I try to target things that, you know, help different people. Now that we got into some graffiti, let's go back to the fine arts side. 
And check out this. What is this? What is this? Oh my god, I love this. Slug Daddy? What? This is this is hold up. Let's see the rest of your profile. This is this is sick. Oh you got you got oh my friend. What is wrong? What happened to who hurt you? <laughs> I love it. This is this is sick. So looking at this piece, I really don't have any criticism for this. I, I really don't. I feel like this is a pretty solid piece. I don't feel I could have done any better myself. If anything, I would say, and this this is a matter of style. This is not a matter of uh of fact or not fact. This is 100% opinion. But I think it would have been dope if you had some subsurface scattering in here because that's totally the texture that this would have. It's a transparent. Kind of texture as a result light would bounce in and bounce around and then come back out causing subsurface scattering and i feel like that technique could have totally have helped on this if you really wanted to take this and make it a lot creepier you could have played with dynamic lighting as well which would really have made this super creepy but looking at your artwork that's not like the subject matters are creepy but the environments never are you tend to stick with these like one color backgrounds which is fine there's nothing wrong with that the point i'm making is dynamic lighting and creepy background may not have fit directly with the whole entire theme you kind of have going within your work, which is creepy character, creepy subject matter, pretty plain background, or pretty normal background, like that. I'm using the word normal loosely with your work. <laughs> I really like this stuff, man. Today it looks like we have a lot of, a lot of really great artists that I don't have any, like, factual things to say about. This is, this is a very opinion-heavy episode, and I usually don't like to give opinion. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think this will bring us to the end of today's critique. We have some stuff. Look at this piece. Look at this. Sota, you're killing me, man. Look at this. Amazing. Amazing. What am I even going to say? What, what am I going to say about you? Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to bring us to the end of today's critique. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want a critique, use the hashtag ABCrit over on Instagram, and you can also submit over on Facebook. I can't always get to everybody, but try to, you know, look at the critique and see what applies to you. And you got to be honest with yourself when you look at your own work as well. That's kind of the hardest part of a critique and receiving one. It's important to be able to have that self-awareness in order to see if it applies or not. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments down below. I'll be happy in order to go deeper into topics and maybe even address some of these topics in the next critique. So if you need me to explain anything, if you need me to really delve deep on something, let me know. And also, this is a community show, so I'd love to hear your thoughts about today's artists in the comments down below. Please keep it respectful and try to provide evidence and facts behind whatever it is you're about to state. And feel free to do that over on Instagram as well. You can go to the hashtag and critique people there because I don't always have the time to do it. Between doing the YouTube videos and the Twitch streams, it's kind of hard to get to everybody. Which that leads me to say, we've been painting over on Twitch four days a week. I got a link in the description. If you follow, that'd be greatly appreciated. It's a massively good time. And for those of you guys who really enjoyed like weekly whips and all that stuff, Twitch is probably where you want to head. That's where we've been doing like all of the fine art stuff. And for those of you guys who knew it, we come out with weekly art content. Pretty much driven solely around you guys. So feel free to subscribe. It's the best way to get our content first. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, Peace.